Ian Kelly, hello. Hello. Uh, you are the head of brands Benelux and Southern Europe at Columbia Threat Needle Real Estate. Uh, your company has recently taken over the management of the CT Retail Europe portfolio. Um, could you give us more details about that portfolio and what it represents for your company? Yeah, sure. So we, we manage about 25 billion of real estate across the US, the UK and Europe. 25% of that is in the retail sector. Our team here in Paris manages about 2 billion of high street retail. That's over 50 properties across Europe. Since we started in 2015, we now manage four funds in high street retail, making us the go-to manager within this asset class in Europe. The city retail portfolio has 23 high street properties across 11 countries in Europe. There are prime properties located in capital cities, international tourism hubs, such as Copenhagen, Milan, and Barcelona. These high street markets are top destinations for retailers and particularly within the luxury districts. There are also properties in secondary markets that cater more towards local consumers, such as Ghent, Rotterdam, or Helsinki. Okay, and what will be your strategy in terms of asset valorization? Uh, will you refurbish, make some tenant up markets, some rental growth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, firstly, we leverage on two long-term macro trends. The first is international tourism. Tourism is back to pre-COVID levels and is forecasted to grow further. The second is high street retail is largely insulated from inflation, particularly for luxury and premium retail. High, consume, high income consumers often combined with wealth are able to offer luxury and premium products and ready to pay more for what they desire. To give some perspective, the global luxury market is forecasted to reach over 550 billion by 2030, more than double its size that it was just four years ago in 2020. On the portfolio itself, our objective is to reduce the vacancy rate under 5%, as is the case on our other funds. We have already signed three leases in Copenhagen, Dublin, and Paris, and with more underway. In order to do that, we accurately measure rental potential. International brands are ready to pay significant levels of rent for quality stores with high visibility and footfall, but on the flip side, if the unit has structural flaws, such as a small facade or a small sales area on the ground floor, then the rental potential will be less. In terms of refurbishment, the size, format, and efficiency of a store are key in defining the potential turnover sales of a retailer. Thus, all our refurbishment projects have the objective to optimize store layout, increase the sales area, and adapt when necessary the unit to a wide range of retailers. Okay. Well, let's take a wider look and keep a focus on uh, prime high street retail assets. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the, the France position regarding the other European markets and precisely Paris? So Paris is, uh, the Paris high street market is the largest in Europe. Um, it is the only city to have two established luxury districts. Those are Avenue Montaigne and Saint-Honoré-Vendôme. In addition, what's really interesting is a third luxury district is taking form on the Champs-Élysées. This makes Paris the largest luxury destination for European tourism. Regarding tourism, Paris is also far ahead in terms of overnight stays, with nearly 20 million overnight stays forecasted this year. That's more than double other European cities, such as Madrid or Rome, for example. And what does that mean for Paris? It means higher levels of spending, higher price points. And that is why Paris has the highest retail rents in Europe. Okay. Um, let's go back to Columbia Third Needle Real Estate. What is your outlook for uh, 2024? Well, as the counter cycle continues and repricing crystallizes in the market, we believe next year will offer uh, attractive investment opportunities. Softer pricing combined with macro trend supporting rental growth will make the timing right for both new investments and new leasing deals. Okay, well, I hope we'll uh, hear from them. Uh, we'll gladly uh, hear from them uh, and uh, from your company. Thanks, thank you, uh, Ian Keeley, for uh, your testimony and maybe uh, see you around uh, later on BITV. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste.
Thanks.